Hi, I'm Monica Adams, 50wonderful.com. Long time no talk. I have been on hiatus. I've been busily doing my gratitude practice and blogging every night and I fell off of my video posts and so I woke up this morning feeling passionate with a message and I thought I would tune in with you today. So today I want to talk about reducing your toxic exposure for the health of it. Why? Why? Why do I want to talk about toxins? Because every single one of us, our lives have been um, touched by cancer and autoimmune disease. You have known somebody in your life that has cancer. My mom died of colon cancer. I lost a friend to um, sarcoma. I have another, another girlfriend who's had a double mastectomy. I uh, know people with skin cancer and colon cancer. There's autoimmune disease, lupus. There's all of this disease in our nation today. And I just want to talk about reducing our toxic exposure. Years ago, I saw the Batman movie in the 80s where the Joker was, um, oh, why did I just lose his name? Anyway, the Joker had, um, had poisoned a bunch of products and people in the movie were getting sick. And it was Jack Nicholson. Thank you. <laughs> Jack Nicholson was the evil joker. And the, everyone was getting sick and nobody knew what was causing it. And the newscasters were showing up and they looked awful. Their skin was blotchy. People were coughing. They were losing their hair. Everybody was sick. And it was a blight across uh, Metropolis. Is that right? And I remember sitting in my seat going, Oh my gosh, this is the harbinger of doom. They are talking about what we are facing in our lives. Today, they were, um, they were kind of pre-forecasting what we're experiencing today. And so what I want to just remind you is that our bodies are filtration systems. We are masters of filtering things. We are detoxification factories. Our liver detoxes our blood. Our skin detoxes the environmental factors. Our kidneys and bladder detoxes um, our bodies from things we have uh, consumed. Our colon and, and uh, small intestines, they work to detoxify everything. Our lungs detoxify our body. Our nose filter our air before it gets to our lungs. We are detox factories. So when we think about, when I think about all the sickness that's happening, all the disease, all the lifestyle diseases, I want to think about reducing my chemical exposure. So I want to talk about reducing our chemical exposure in the products we use, in our food and what we consume and what we put in and on our bodies and in our environment, our air, our water, our home and the planet, baby. Oh, I'm so passionate about this. So the products we use, let's talk about that a little bit. I had a girlfriend who was going to naturopathic school and she had a, a teacher who was uh, writing a book. I don't remember what his, his name was or what his book was. I'll try and see if I can find that information. The first thing he said was get rid of chemical based uh, air fresheners. Like if you want to lose weight, his big thing was quit with the chemicals. So stop with the, the manufactured air fresheners. Get rid of those little trees that are hanging in your cars like little toxic icons. <laughs> you could choose to diffuse with essential oils. You don't get those room sprays that go off when you walk in. <laughs> You're just spraying yourself with toxic chemicals every time you walk in. Like make your own room spray with distilled water, a little grapefruit seed extract, and some essential oils. Or if, you, if, you, if that seems like too much, then just choose the natural room sprays that are made with the, the like orange or lemon or things like that. Go perfume and dye free and make that a stand 
in your world so that you are reducing the chemicals that you're putting on and into your body. So I'm talking about your laundry detergent. Choose perfume and dye free. There's options at the grocery store. They're not that expensive. Choose perfume and dye free dryer sheets. Choose clear colored soaps. Choose a dish soap with no green or blue coloring. Right? And speaking of coloring, stop drinking and eating food coloring. Like they stated back in the like 50s or 60s that red dye was a leading cause of cancer. Well, how can yellow number 40 be any better? <laughs> choose, I know Easter's coming and you're thinking, I've got to dye eggs with the kids. Well, choose to do some natural dyes this year with your Easter eggs. How fun would that be? Choose to dye with onion skins and um, I'm sure you can go online. I'll, I'll come back on this one and post some more on natural dyes for Easter eggs. Um, you can stain with beet or carrot and try something fun, some kind of cool experiments with your kids. Oh no, my feet are just kicked on. <laughs> Sorry about the background noise. Uh, oh, reduced chemical exposure by reducing the chemicals in the products that we use. Reduce your chemical and toxic exposure with our food supply, right? Our food supply is not what it once was. Back in the 50s, farmers, when they farmed, would, would plant cover crops in between their crops to nutrify the soil. They're not doing that anymore. The whole mechanism, the whole food mechanism is run by profit mongers. It's all about profit. So our soil isn't as nutrient dense as it once was. Even if you're thinking, I'm getting healthy foods, our foods aren't as nutrient dense as they used to be. So choose organic. There's a study out right now. I posted it on Facebook last week. It says, and this came out in the Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA that said that if you choose organic as often as possible, you can reduce your chance of getting cancer by 25%. 25, should I do that backwards? 25%. <laughs> oh my gosh, we should be shouting that from the rooftops, right? Wow. Oh, I choose free range. I choose wild caught. I choose grass-fed as often as possible. Now I know that when I go out to eat in a restaurant, I'm, I'm not getting the highest quality of meats and produce because they're cooking for the masses. And that's okay. An occasional meal out is still lovely and I love going out to dinner. When I think about the foods that I choose at the grocery store, I want to reduce, I want to choose foods that are more whole. What do I mean by that? I mean whole foods, whole fruits, whole vegetables, natural quality meats. Those are the, the, the things that I choose. If you're gonna create, if you're gonna eat a, a, something that's been created for you, prepackaged crackers, ice cream, um, some kind of packaged soup, like read every label every time. And choose the product that has less ingredients, or that has ingredients that you recognize and that has less additives and skip artificial sweeteners. Like seriously, skip artificial sweeteners. Try honey, raw honey instead if you just have to have a little sweetener. And, and stop consuming food colorants. If it looks green or blue or orange or yellow, look at the label and help your body out by making different choices by what you put on it and in it. And when I say on it, I mean look at your products, your hair care products, your skin care products. See if you can choose items that are more natural, have less ingredients, have things that you recognize. I stopped using a facial cleanser and I switched to Dr. Bronner's uh, lavender castile soap and can I just tell you I love it I totally love it let's talk about environment air 
water home planet. So I think a lot about how to be healthier. When I was um, between 40 and 47, I had three miscarriages. And someone said to me, she watched me drinking my coffee and I was using Coffee Mate hazelnut creamer because I was addicted. And she said, you know, that's one of the leading causes of miscarriage and birth defects. So I stopped using that creamer and started using something else. Um, water. I have water piped in to my tap, just like you do, and I still filter it. I filter it out through a double filtration process with a Nikon filter. I use, um, it has a ceramic based filter and then it goes through um, a carbon filter and I change that twice a year. I have a water filter on my shower which removes the um, chlorine and can I tell you my hair and skin feel amazing because I have a lovely filter on my shower. Think about how many chemicals we're exposed to and we don't even think about it every day. Our homes, right? Our carpeting, the, the paint, the stuff that's off-gassing, our mattresses, our clothing, everything that we put next to our skin and our bodies is laden with chemicals or has been processed with chemicals. Somebody just recently told me to stop eating cheese manufactured in America. Now I'm probably setting myself up for lots of comments here, but she said that cheese in America, like Americans love their creamy soft cheeses. We love Monterey Jack, we love our soft cheddars, we love our um, white cheeses, and the process that helps cheeses stay soft, stay soft is that it's, uh, she said that, and I have not researched this, so if I'm, if you find other data, please pass it along, because I'm a total research nerd. It's processed with aluminum, and that helps the cheese stay soft. Now, they don't have to mention aluminum as an ingredient in the cheeses, but we know that aluminum kind of makes people crazy. So stop cooking with aluminum foil, right? Don't heat your food up in aluminum. Don't store it in aluminum. Don't cook with aluminum pans. I threw up my aluminum pans 25 years ago. Like seriously, if aluminum is bad, then think about that. And, and she said, eat cheese that's made from another um, someplace in Europe. That's fascinating. I love to look up data like that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about water. So years ago, I went on a trip to Greece, and as I was standing there in this beautiful location on the water, I think I was, um, I was in the island of Mykonos, and I walked to the edge of the seawall. I could hear the waves crashing, and it was just a beautiful, it was just about twilight, the sun was going down, and it was that change of light in the day. And I looked over the edge of the seawall, and I kid you not, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of plastic water bottles. Plastic water bottles that had floated up from around the globe to this one spot in Greece. And I know that Greece is not alone in its environmental pollution. So this load of water bottles was like 30 feet long. It was at least 10 feet deep and probably 15 feet wide. I was so shocked and so saddened that I came home that day and said, if I never buy another plastic water bottle again, that would be fantastic. I carry a glass water bottle that I fill. I carry stainless steel water bottle. I actually like to drink out of a quart size jar, like a mason jar. Um, I have my own water filtration system. Now, occasionally if I'm out and I need water, I'll buy a water bottle, but I'll try and save that and use it multiple times. But I don't even want to feed the dog the water 
from the water bottle, right? Because they say if those water bottles are kept in your car and exposed to heat or sun, that they off-gas chemicals, plastic chemicals in the water we're drinking. And we are just so oblivious. And look at Costco. Costco sells them by the pallet. So stop it. Just stop it. Stop it for the planet. Stop it for your body. Stop it for your health. Wake up. <laughs> Okay, so I mentioned that I had had three miscarriages. At that time, I was thinking a lot about plastics and I, I decided to cleanse out our kitchen. I went into the kitchen and I started pulling out plastics. I had some plastic utensils, the light blue kind, that I had had for since the 80s, like 20 years. I had had these plastic spatula and plastic spoons. Now imagine that over time, that plastic is breaking down every time I use that spatula. I looked into the Tupperwares, right? We love plastic containers. Everybody loves plastic. Everything we eat is in plastic. So I went through the Tupperwares and if it had been microwaved in and had some, you know, degrading, it had been cooked, like that stuff, straight to the trash. I kept the plastic containers that had not been cooked in and I stopped cooking in plastic. I start. I bought a, a bunch of glass containers. I went to Goodwill and found glass containers with glass lids. I took those to work so that people could heat their food up in glass instead. Um, and I started storing my leftovers in glass. Those little glass um, mason jars, the like half fat ones with the big lids, those make great storage containers for leftovers. So toss your own utensils, and bad pans, oh my gosh. How many of you have Teflon coated pans that are scratched? Every time you cook, those chemicals are released into your food. So give yourself the grace to buy new pans. I chose stainless steel pans. I know a lot of you are like, what? I need my, my um, non-stick surface. Well, then, Get yourself a cast iron skillet and take good care of it and it'll be super non-stick. So I, I've watched YouTube videos on how to um, take good care of my iron pans and my stainless pans, when they get all grimy and grungy and cooked food on them, I soak them with some water, I put a little dash of clear dish soap in there, put them back on the heat element, cook it for a few minutes till it comes to boil, and then I got a stainless steel little scrubber and that cleans those pans just beautifully. You can make them shine again. So where am I going with all this? Reducing your toxic exposure in the products we use, the foods we eat, and in our environment for our, our air, the water, our home, our planet. Like if we just started voting with our dollars and we stopped buying chemical laden products, we stopped using water bottles, right? The environment's gonna shift. The producers will stop using toxic items as well, right? If we vote with our dollars, we're gonna move the profit margin to another direction. And our bodies and our planet will be healthier. So start, oh, that's another thing, right? the styrofoam containers. Now styrofoam is outlawed in Seattle. That's awesome. But over here on the Kitsap Peninsula, we're still using it. I don't know why. There's no place to recycle it. And I'm guessing that the, the local cash and carry doesn't offer options that are biodegradable. Like we need biodegradable everything. If every bit of plastic that's ever been manufactured still on the planet, then why aren't we demanding that it's biodegradable? Because it's ruining our oceans, it's killing our fish, it is polluting everywhere, and we need to make a stand against that. So um, that is my two cents on reducing toxic exposure. Just start thinking about things, read your labels, make different choices, stop using additives, the sugar substitutes. Um, in fact, next week, I'm gonna talk about sugar. Let's talk about reducing toxic load 
with sugar next week. So this has been uh, my installment of Wellness Wednesday. Hi Grace, thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate your tuning in, whether it's live or um, watching the replay. Please feel free to comment, to share, to tell me what you're doing to reduce your toxic load, whether you're choosing wool carpet, wool berber instead of a polypropylene, how you're recycling in your neighborhood, things that you're doing to start with planetary cleanup. I want to hear about all of it because I'm passionate. I appreciate your help, your attention, and let's get healthier. Let's be healthier in our bodies. Let's make healthier choices with what we eat, what we use, and what we ultimately leave on the planet for the next generations to clean up. We are all in this together. It's one planet, one people. None of us are getting out of here alive. So let's make some choices to be healthier. Blessings. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'll catch you next Wednesday, 9 a.m., Wellness Wednesday. And next week, I'm talking about toxic sugar load. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, Grace. Oh, I guess I should, I should put a plug. So my website, if you are interested in finding out more, I'm a wellness coach. I'm a transformational life coach. And I'm all about saying yes to your happiness, your joy, your body, your health and living a life of fulfillment and uh, joy that is sustainable. So www.50wonderful.com. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.